Have I done something to offend you? The paperwork is complete. All you have to do is sign. Why do you want to leave all of a sudden? I'm not in a good mood anymore. I'm leaving. Please tell me what I did to offend you. I can't believe you are going to make me say this out loud. I was in the middle of telling you about my son being accepted into medical school, but you were only concerned with the paperwork and didn't even listen to anything I said. This is what I have been missing. Hello, I'm Jesse from IGM. The character Joe in the scenario is actually based on U.S. salesman Joe Girard, who is considered the greatest American salesman of all time. In a span of 12 years, Girard sold over 13,000 cars, which equates to five cars a day. He is truly a living legend. To put this in perspective, the average South Korean car salesman sells three to five cars per month. In 2001, Gerard's achievements earned him a spot in the Automobile Hall of Fame, along with Henry Ford. Gerard is also in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the world's top car salesman for 12 years straight. Gerard's accomplishments are amazing to say the least, but even a living legend like Gerard experienced a time where he failed to close a sale, as shown in the scenario. Gerard maintained his motivation and used situations like this as motivation to consider how to approach consumers. In other words, he thought about methods for approaching customers. Are you familiar with the story of Romeo and Juliet? It's the tragic love story of a young couple facing incredible opposition to their love, but eventually attaining eternal love through death. Ironically, focusing on one thing too much often results in the exact opposite, dealing with customers is the same. A salesperson only concerned with selling a product inadvertently ignores and alienates the consumer. This is the reason for Gerard's inability to close the sale in the scenario. By solely concentrating on selling a car, he completely ignored his customer and the customer's emotional state. After this failed sale, Gerard realized, in order to sell, I must not sell. Are you confused? When approaching a customer, do not approach as a salesperson selling a product. Instead, approach them as a friend. Pushy and aggressive salespeople do nothing but turn consumers away. But people react differently and are more open when a friend is talking to them. According to Gerard, this is the first step in sales. One day, a middle-aged woman entered Gerard's car lot. She had just signed the paperwork for a car at the Ford lot across the street, but she had some time on her hands and decided to look around. Being an experienced salesman, Gerard welcomed her and began a conversation with her. She had told Gerard that it was her birthday and she wanted to buy herself a white car as a birthday present. Gerard instantly wished her a happy birthday and quietly whispered something to one of his employees. As Gerard talked to the woman, he casually walked her towards a white Chevrolet. Just then, Gerard's employee presented the woman with a bouquet of flowers and wished her a happy birthday. The gesture of the flowers moved the woman so much that she cancelled her contract with Ford and bought the white Chevrolet instead. If Gerard had only focused on selling a car, none of this would have been possible. He would have simply ignored her for signing a contract with Ford and gone on to the next customer. Gerard listened to his customers and approached them as a friend. This type of sales method is common. Apple trains their Apple Store employees not to sell, but to understand and solve customer problems. That is why Apple Store employees do not get commissions or incentives. These things only incite internal sales competitions and forces salespeople to push products on customers. Apple Store employees cheerfully greet customers when they enter the store, but they never ask questions like, what are you shopping for? They ask questions like, what brings you here? or what can I help you with? Small talk like this leads to more casual conversation, like talking with a friend. Maybe it's a result of this sales method, but according to research results from retail sales in 2012, Apple stores achieved the highest on-site sales per square foot. In fact, the Apple store sales per square foot were calculated at 6,050 US dollars, twice as much as Tiffany's, which ranked second. Being honest and sincere allows customers to open up and treat salespeople like friends. But there is more. Now that the customer has opened up, a full-scale sales pitch is required. 
In order to do this, Gerard would help customers as much as possible. As a result, the customers would feel indebted to him, making his sales that much easier. Robert B. Cialdini's The Psychology of Persuasion defines this as the law of reciprocity. Simply put, when a person receives a favor, they feel the need to return that favor. Gerard would keep various brands of cigarettes in his office. Whenever a customer wanted to smoke, Gerard would ask what brand they smoked and would quickly hand the customer a pack of that brand as if it was all fate. Gerard was able to make the entire situation natural, and for the small price of cigarettes, he leads his customers to feel the need to return a favor. As a result, they would buy things and even connect their friends and acquaintances as referrals. The law of reciprocity is used for many different methods in sales. U.S. Health, Beauty and Home Care Company Amway would give consumers a small box of free samples called the Bug. The Bug consisted of various Amway products that customers could freely use for two to three days. After the free trial, the customers will go ahead and purchase many of the products. According to Amway, the method Law of Reciprocity was a significant factor in their growth. So what do you think? Like Joe Girard says, the best way to sell is not to sell. Making overt sales pitches simply makes customers raise their guard. Instead, approach customers as a comfortable and familiar friend. Be genuine and sincere in the relationships that you make to develop the positive reciprocity. After doing this, Girard's Law of 250 can be applied. This is the concept that states that the average person is connected to about 250 people, more or less. So managing one customer with care can be the equivalent of taking care of 250 customers at the same time. So take the law of 250 to heart and apply it now.